Hello everyone, welcome back to the lab, and also welcome to a new episode of Roads to World 2024, where I will be documenting the journey of myself grinding competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, and eventually, hopefully, make to uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championship of 2024. Uh, that being said, let's start this today's episode. So last time we finished with this Rescue Ace deck, the Horus Rescue Ace that I utilized and won fairly regional with it undefeated. And this week, there are still a couple of things um, left in Age of Overlord that I didn't talk about that also kind of utilized similar idea as this Rescue Ace deck. So, throughout the past couple episodes, I talk about the Furnier package, I talk about the Deer, uh, Deer Bell Star package, and I talk about the Horus package. And there are definitely some different implications I can, like, combine those together into other decks. And I guess we start with the first one. It's Vanquish Soul. As many people already know, Vanquish Soul is already a deck... Uh, even before all these like research I've done, already a deck utilizing Cashier Furnier because this is one of the cards that can provide different attribute. It's solid as a single card for both going first and second. Works very well with the whole Banker Soul deck. However, this this version you see right now, it's a very specific version that also even included um, the horse cards. Horus cards, like I mentioned not in the last episode, not every it's obviously good or better in milling decks. However, even in the non milling decks, they are still doing some decent job. In like a lot of situations, you can treat this as like an additional summon to some of your key engine monster. In specific case of Vanquish Soul, if you're if like the top nine cards has a raisin, then Imsadis will be able actually no top ten because it will be a five opening card, a card you draw off Imsadi and then the four milled of Zombie Vampire. If there's a raisin out of the top ten, then you have raisin to start your combo. And Imsadi by itself is a dark so also like in situation where you do draw multiple or you want to um resolve your uh, vs first it's still it's also a solid attribute to be reviewed by a lot of the vs monsters so this is like the difference than i guess the standard venker so um obviously because the whole m seti package because going through zombie vampire Charmers will be a live turn one, and that will me that means Charmers can easily connect to Saling, and Saling means Saling means uh, Appaloosa going first. So even before you start your Vanquish or combo, it's very likely Horus will just get to you, maybe a Raisin Axis in the middle, and then uh, an Appaloosa without even consuming your normal summon. And these doesn't even conflict with what Furnier can do. Furnier, on the other hand, um, like I've been used, Furnier, uh, at the beginning of the combo, just search Rice Heart. Rice Heart is also a fire that Vanquish Soul do play uh, to be reviewed for all their effects. And then searching Rice Heart here at the beginning with Furnier, checks draw. If they do draw, normal summon Rice Heart, banish another Furnier, make a Draco Sack, get two tokens. Then these two tokens can go into like an IP, or maybe even if you feel like enough spaces in the extra deck, play Link Spider with would play link play like two Link Spiders with Crystal Heart and Kiso, which is also a variant that was more used in the cash um cash uh, cash tier decks. But in this one, because the extra deck is kind of tight, uh, I think a single IP would just do the job uh, similarly enough. However, there's definitely some downsides of this version of Vanquish that kind of popped up through testing. 
First of all, Horus cards do consume a lot of cards in hand. So, in a situation where, like, you have to choose between either fully resolve Vanquish or pitch them for Horus. And that would result, like, even you hitting any Vanquish, it might not be... You might not be gaining those card advantage back to hand. Or it's hard to do, at least. So, it's awkward to set up um, Snow Devil uh, perfectly. There are also the very small odds, like Snow Devil just getting mailed by its own vampire at the very beginning, which at that point would just be unfortunate. Um, the other thing, or I, well, I guess it's not really a downside, is Happy is a winged monster, um, which is, the attribute is very awkward in this deck. Uh, ideally, you want something or fire, earth, or uh, dark. So, probably the better one would be the earth horse. But the earth, earth horse guy really doesn't do anything. It says if anything else, leave the field because your opponent's card effect. Or your horse monster for the rest of the turn get a buff. Where it cannot be targeted by card effect, nor it can be um, uh, nor can be targeted for attacks. Usually, horse monsters already kind of quote unquote immune from being attacked because King Sark is a card, and then the targeting effect is also like it has to be specifically protecting from I guess targeting removal and targeting the gate. However, those don't really exist much. Um, in the current game, more more often things would just be like, uh, what like a, like a draw player or a triple tag, maybe occasionally super poly, fusing away some of the horse monster. Imperm is something like it probably would be used immediately at the beginning of the turn, so it would not be waited and long enough until this guy activated. So that's the awkwardness of happy. Uh, the pros and cons between these two, in any of these horse deck, there are obviously situations where you just end on horse monster, let them sit there instead of comboing them into like zombie vampire IP. I think sit, let them sitting there arguably is a lot more annoying for for opponents to deal with it. And in these kind of situations, Happy does a lot more uh, than the Earth one. However, in a situation where you do raw draw this one, Happy, this wind attribute is completely dead in this entire Vanquish Soul deck. However, being an Earth, being actually like short on Earth monster in the entire list, having an extra Earth instead of a wind can definitely change things for um, Vanquish Soul's effects. So that's the pros and cons, like... A lot of people probably, if you if you are interested in this list, you probably have to give both of them a try and see how you feel about it. Another card I really like to include in this deck is Small World. Small World was already being played in some Vanquish Souls in the past. And now there's even more things to search. Fun fact, uh, Vadius is a level 8. So, it's a bridge to Yem City. Borger is a dark bridge to Yem City. Even Ash has 18 defense is a bridge to Yem City. So, with these, yeah, you can pretty much turn nearly everything into an Yem City whenever you want. I think it's like, um, let me see. Valius turn into Borger because they're both 15 defense. And then either of them can connect to M City. Uh, Jiao Long can go into Ash, then go into M City. Raisin, I don't think you will ever smuggle the Raisin way. But if, in case you do, it's the same way. Well, Raisin can connect into Valius, Borger, and Ash. And then Malov, you just need to go through a different dark in the deck. Like Malov, Borger, M City. Um, Fernier and Pantera. Are Earth, so you go through as Valius. And let me see, can you go into. Yeah, even Droll 
Uh, you can go from Droll into Ash because they're both zero attack, then go into Imseti. So nearly this whole deck is connected with Small World. That's cool. But the downside, yeah, there are a bit too many draws in the format. Doesn't even matter which one you search at the end, either being Imseti, being Raisin, getting drawed after that feels horrible. And I obviously didn't like it. <laughs> so I didn't really put it in the main, but you can definitely sacrifice some non engines or even in engine cards for a set or some copies of Small World. And the other downside compared to standard Vanquish Soul, I think one of the selling points for Vanquish Soul is the ability to play Shifter in the side or even in the main. Uh, that gets awkward when the Horus cards are present in the deck. So, I mean, you can obviously still run both, but in a situation where you need to use Shifter, Horus cards will be shut down for a turn, at least. Uh, yeah, it gets it gets weird. I mean, worst case, it can be used as a cost, right, for King Sark. Um, so, I don't know. I'm not that big of a Vanquish Soul fan. It just there is one guy in our testing group who is. So we kind of build it together to see how is it is it is this gonna be like a better version of Vanquish or just gonna be the same? Turned out, yeah, you can do a lot more like non-Vanquish kind of. Going first place because M said he just such a broken enabler for a lot of the combos. And overall, I will say this is, in my opinion, a much better way to play Vanquish. At least much more fun way because you have way more things to do. And however, is this the best way to play horse cards? That probably isn't. So, if you are um, interested in Vector Soul, if you have those cards, I think these cards still worth some money. So, it's not that cheap to pick up every, just a Vanquish core. But if you do have those, uh, or you are planning to get the ultimate rock for next OTS, yeah, feel free to give the, the deck as a try. Um, all the cards are already uh, available in the card pool. There's nothing you need from Phantom Nightmare. Um, side deck, you probably have side deck and non engines. You probably have to ch change based on the different formats you played. I feel like this would be a very solid Age of Overload format contender if it was discovered way earlier, like maybe right after the balance, or hypothetically if the balance was like released a lot earlier. Maybe we can see the format slowly develop to the point where this would this would be played in the meta. However, now it feels like a bit too late because Konami really released this balance quite late until nearly the end of the Agoff season to the point like the whole month of January to a lot of people is now worth researching because they don't have any big tournaments. And then there's another deck, also similar idea of abusing Horus Engine, is the Chimera deck. See, Chimera are also new cards, relatively newer cards from Dune and Agoth. So they are definitely have the powerful new card kind of phenomenon here. And... Surprising to say, they are getting very powerful support in the set after Phantom Nightmare, what's called it, uh, Legacy of Destruction. And these supports are so good that the deck right now, like the Horse Chimera deck, is like kind of being tested in OCG as like a very viable uh, meta contender. Or at least a possible future meta contender, maybe eventually after another OCG balance is dropped. So, for us, Legacy of Destruction will be released on May, or I think either either late late April or early May, which means this deck, or maybe even specifically this version of deck, will be a solid contender for our next season. And uh, it's never too late to just get 
the feeling of it, get all the cards ready, get the get a hang of it, and get get prepared. Seeing as none of the new like the new cards obviously are broken, but they are just starter kind of. They're just additional starters, and so far the best starters already in the deck, like the Mirror Swords Knight into whatever Chimera pieces you're missing, and obviously there are synergies of horrors. Horus cards in this deck are just like an additional summon. You're also freely to pitch them. There are cards that are very, very good cost to pitch of them study because Etchum Chains and the whole patchwork package works in this list. Uh, chain, set, chain works whenever it gets sent from hand or field to graveyard, which is just the perfect cost for M Seti and King Sark. King Sark plus Chains, despite these are probably the two worst piece of engine starter, uh, you can already fill the, your graveyard with plenty of um, horse monsters. And fun fact, the water horse is actually a beast type. So even, so hypothetically, the, like you when you draw it or when you, you can just mill it, you can just access a beast through the horse package. Which give the deck additional reason to even run a third different name of horse. Besides that, the whole Chimera deck works very self-explanatory. It's just one card. Um, you go through pretty much all your pieces, and you end with this one card. But going through like, but ending on some like big fusion monsters. Um, what's the downside of this? Draw still a big problem. Like, draw is. The TCG equivalent of OCG's Max C. So whenever a deck is being played, it has draw has to be heavily considered. And it seems like we are constantly non-stop in formats where draw just gonna be very present. So it's I mean it's gonna it's gonna be a hard task to deal with draw, but I think everyone's able to uh adapt to it slowly. And we'll see how the format really goes based on like different balance, different card release, maybe even some TCG exclusive um, has impact to the meta. But overall, yeah, this is like a very self-explanatory deck. Um, I even tossed the wing, the wing charmer here just in case of draw happen. So I can like, because there is cornfield as a winged monster and also the chimera wing beasts. So... I can like maybe go into a win, then win into draw, into a saline, into apple. At least have some form of defenses on the board um, from the, the Chimera deck. And there are some fusion restrictions being like the big win Baphomet, but it only lock you into fusions after it has already resolved its effect. So. If things sequence it correct, you can easily just do all the non-fusion plays at the beginning and then commit into fusions at a certain point of the combo. So overall, yeah, this is another deck um, that I would like to show. Maybe it's a little bit too early for the TCG meta. Maybe this is more for formats after. But the whole idea or the whole idea of the whole deck and the whole idea of abusing horse engine is there. And these probably can apply to way more decks than we built before. You can, in theory, maybe even see things like what? Horse. <laughs> we had a lot of different decks last one, all right? Maybe we can see things like horse manadium, horse purely, horse unchained, <laughs> hypothetically. But now um there the horse package is outclassed a little bit under the shine of uh diabel the wanted package but once konami address those maybe horse will be the next engine that we're gonna abuse as much as we can so despite they're already expensive probably worth the investment to just pick those up and Overall, yeah, uh, if you also have any fun with the horse package, with any of these lists, uh, feel free to let me know. And uh, I think this is actually going to mark the end of 
the whole Agov season. I'm out of really anything from Agov to show. Um, Phantom Nightmare. Probably Phantom Nightmare content probably won't come out for a bit because in not too long after I upload this video, I will be heading to uh, California for the UDS big tournament and then straight travel from Los Angeles to Las Vegas for the 3v3. So road to 2024 will probably take a pause until I'm back from all those tournaments. Well, however, I mean, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, that being said, hope you like this video and uh, subscribe to the channel. Let me know anything you have in your mind in the comment section. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.